Welcome back. This is Dr. Khan of the ACL Academy, and I'm here dropping another video. Today, we're going to touch on Cyclops lesion, how it can slow down your process, what it is, and a self-assessment that you could perform to see if this could be a possible issue in your ACL recovery. Before I get into that, guys, if you found some value in this channel, please subscribe to it. Like the video, comment below with any questions, and more importantly, share with a fellow ACLer that can benefit from this content. If you are new to the page, this channel is specifically for you, the ACLer. We put everything in layman's terms so we can empower and educate you as an ACL uh, rehab athlete, an individual who sustained an ACL injury that's going through this process. If you don't know what we do here at the ACL Academy, we are a digital coaching platform to help you recover more efficiently, more effectively, safely, and confidently. And we do this all online. We work with people all over the world. So if you have some questions and follow-ups, please either comment below or you can reach out to us um, through the uh, uh, information on the homepage there. So Cyclops lesion, what is it? It's actually a bundle of scar tissue that forms in the front of the knee joint, particularly in what we call the intercondylar notch, so the notch the ACL runs through. Sometimes this can form. Usually um, it, you will see this uh, more pronounced in people that are a couple to a few months out. And one of the telltale signs is you don't achieve full extension. There are many reasons that people don't achieve full extension, though. Cyclops lesion is one of them. And unfortunately, with the Cyclops lesion, if you do have a true Cyclops lesion, it usually requires uh, surgery to go in there and remove that wad of uh, scar tissue that has formed there. Now, we don't know exactly why it happens. There are some theories that uh, it could be remnants of the old ACL that's, that's sitting in there and that's causing some scar formation. There are a theory that it could be when they drill the tibial tunnel or the, the tunnel in your shin bone where the new ACL will run can form some scar tissue there. Uh, it, it may even just develop over time as you're going through this process if you don't receive the extension early on. This is why we talk about pushing that extension early on. It's the primary, primary goal. There's a lot of videos on this about the importance of the extension both prior to surgery and then, of course, after surgery, the number one goal is extension. I have a couple of videos on how we stretch it, how we work it, so please take a look at those. But in this particular case, like with this, a uh, couple signs, right? One is obviously lacking extension is something that we're going to start thinking about if we're not achieving it, if we're not making progress, is it a cyclops lesion? Number two, a big thing that I ask my clients is, where is your pain when we're working extension, pushing extension, stretching into it? Usually, pain, discomfort, should be on the backside, and it could feel like a stretch, right? If we don't have full extension, well, the backside of our knee is shortened. So that could be the muscles, the hamstring muscle, the calf, the, uh, the calf muscle, the crisscross of the knee joint can also be the, the back of the knee joint itself. We call it like a posterior capsule, right? The bubble that the, uh, that the joint is surrounded in. So that can be tight. But most of this comfort when we're stretching into extension, working into extension, should be in the back. There are some complaints in the front too because uh, as you're working the, um, uh, the tissues, you may feel it on both ends of the knee. That's normal. But if the majority of your pain is in the front, in the front itself – this is a little bit more worrisome, coupled with the fact that if you're not making extension gains, or if you make some gains and you lose the extension right away, and another hallmark sign is your quad muscles just really have a hard time coming back, no matter how much you work them, how much you push them, uh, no matter what we do. So those are the symptoms uh, that I usually ask people. And then one test that I do, and this is a self-test that you can do as well, is very simple, straightforward. If you're sitting on a, a plinth or you can even do the sitting on the floor. Grab like a foam ruler, or if you don't have a foam ruler, like a couple books that you could put under your heel itself. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to prop up our leg, and I usually put the placement of the uh, foam roller or book just 
at the heel or just at the ankle level. So this way the knee can kind of sink down, right? That's what we're looking for to see if as we push down there. Now, really, if, if you just put gentle, gentle pressure below the kneecap, so you find your kneecap here, so below and above, okay, if you add some pressure in there, you should be able to stretch it into extension or push the knee into extension. When you do that, okay, the first question you're going to ask yourself is where do I feel that? Now, you could do just kind of gentle couple pulses, even some, some sustained pressure, and while you're doing that, you're going to pay attention. So normally, if, if it's just a stretch that you're feeling, right, if the backside is tight, you should feel some discomfort in the back, right? A stretching type feeling, a stretch can go down to the calf or even above towards the butt, uh, and then particularly back of the knee. That's a normal feeling. It's a normal sign, especially early on as we're working extension, we haven't achieved it yet. But if I'm pushing on it and the majority of my pain is actually in the front, particularly like below the kneecap and feeling deep inside, well, this is more of a concern to me that you're not necessarily getting a stretch back here and the block that you're feeling is in the front. Okay, so that's one of the signs. The other sign is if my knee is in a bent position like this and I'm able to push down and I get what we call like a really springy end feel where I'm hitting something and it's bouncing back, this also is a feeling to me like, hey, it may be that something is being restricted more so in the front versus the back there. So that's how you would do the self-test. It literally it doesn't require anything other than uh, something to elevate your heel and some pressure to push down on. And then you would feel some discomfort in the front versus the back itself. Now, it doesn't mean that if you have pain in the front, you have automatically the cyclops lesion. The pain can get uncomfortable, right? We're working um, uh, the knee daily. We're pushing the muscles in there. We're pushing tendons in there so that you may have some soreness, some achiness in the front. That is not may not be a, a cyclops lesion itself. It's just one of the tests that we would do coupled with the other symptoms, right? You're lacking extension. Um, you, your quad muscles are not really firing the right way. Uh, you're not feeling strong. You had a plateau in extension or it, you've had some gains in extension and then you're losing it right away. So, you know, I use the test, but I also ask a lot of questions and know where you are in the process. This would give me some more information. Uh, but it, super important, guys, if, if you can be very, very diligent right off the bat uh, after your ACL surgery and you really focus it on the extension, which is – Two two faceted approach. One is stretching it and long duration type stretching, right? So I had my foot up on the bolster there uh, with a little weight on the knee. This is a way to stretch it for a long period of time, 10 to 12 minutes, a good length of time. Let the tissues in the back get lengthened. And then it's all about quad activation, quad activation, quad activation. So you're going to find different ways to fire your quad muscle to actually use that new gain extension. So those are the two pieces that I like to use early on. We really overload with high amounts of volume. So if you do that, you really can get where you need to be. Now, these people that I speak um, that are months out and still having extension issues, well, I first would attack it with the stretching and the quad activation to see what kind of gains that we can make. And if we're still at a standstill, a lot of the discomforts in the front, and we're thinking cyclops lesion, really the referral is back to the surgeon to do an MRI to see what's there. And if it's something that is there, this usually requires surgery to get it removed. And then after the surgery, we would be very aggressive to gain the extension and keep the extension there. But I will tell you about a lot of cases where people were months out, not having the extension, thinking it's a... Um, some type of uh, uh, scar tissue development or cyclops lesion there. And if they just do some proper stretching, they do get their quads awake, you can see some solid, solid gains. So it's not always the case where surgery is the answer. But make sure that you're exhausting all the rehab options, um, working with somebody who particularly works with ACL clients and then can really guide your process. And if at that point you're not making the gains that you need to, that's when I would refer out have some follow-up testing, and then take it from there. So I hope you guys had some value here. If you have questions, 
drop them below. If you find that this video was valuable to you, please like it, subscribe to your channel, and more importantly, share with a fellow ACLR that can benefit from the, these tips and education. This is Dr. Khan signing off. We will see you next week.